Welcome back to Steve's World of Wonders. Peace Tower. There's the Chateau Laurier and a conference center. This is the Rideau Canal here, Mackenzie King Bridge, and that's the Rideau Center with the Nordstroms. You can sort of make out they've got some cars on display in the lobby at the conference center. The Shaw Center. where I'm headed up there. I'm headed over this way, the Ottawa Art Gallery, the OAG. There's an old jail there. An old wall gateway for Nicholas Street. This is uh, Ottawa University here. You can see the sign for it there. University of Ottawa. And I'm headed in here. It's International Astronomy Day. 
day today, May 11th, and I'm headed into the Ottawa Art Gallery. Apparently they have some science and astronomy related activities and art in here. So let's go have a look. Ottawa Art Gallery currently has a focus on this artist, Juan Goyer, an Ottawa artist born in the Netherlands. He created this piece of art called Surface Back in Time. While working with the Earth's Physics Branch, Goyer designed scientific instruments as well as models and displays that illustrate theoretical concepts. One of his inventions was the telescope a device that allows scientists to test theories of tectonic plate shifts by visualizing and photographing them in a hemispheric globe. This work, drawn from this device, displays a paleogeographic map of the Earth and is one of several works he created based on the Earth's development and evolution. This is another piece by the same artist. Turns the view upside down. photos here of rock layers. Here's a sign for Juan Goyer's art installation called WIS, an acronym for Water in Suspense, an installation that connects the viewer with the invisible qualities of the natural world. Juan Goyer meant to engage us with such hidden phenomena as the microscopic beauty of a drop of water mingled with light. This installation uses a peristaltic pump calibrated to deliver a single droplet of water before a warm orange beam emitting from a laser. The imagery of this interaction is projected to a magnified scale onto the wall. Goyer wanted to engage people with natural phenomenon and here we can contemplate our own engagement in this as our shadow is overlaid through the blue light on the opposite side of the room. Born into a Dutch family of artists, Juan Goyer left Holland just before the beginning of the Second World War. He came to Canada in 1954.
cartographic grids. Goyer created his cartographic grids between 1975, that's when I was born, and 2003, influenced by geophysical maps. These ethereal works were delicately scribed into mylar by the artist's hand. Situated at the threshold between philosophy and geology, they play with our perception and our assumptions about maps as we question what exactly are they measuring. Goyer was born into a Dutch family of artists. After coming to Canada in 1954, he worked as a draftsman for the National Research Council in the Dominion Observatory here in Ottawa uh, from the late 1950s to the 1970s. This is where Goyer found inspiration in science, astronomy, geology, mathematical concepts, mapping out geological data to visualize scientific information. This would lead to an interest in bridging a gap between art and science and leading the ordinary person through his art into universes that science can reveal or drawing viewers' attention to aspects of nature that are sometimes taken for granted. Here he is with a carding machine he invented. In 1963, he painted the mural The Signs of the Zodiac on the ceiling of the lobby of the Dominion Observatory in Ottawa. The observatory housed the largest refracting telescope ever installed in Canada. The Dominion Observatory was also Canada's leading institution for geophysics for many decades, which included the operation of Canada's National Seismometer Network. My aim is to engage the viewer, said Goyer, and to re-enchant the world, not as mystification, but as clarity. Goya created the sculptural work such as the Fault Plane Solution Calculator based on stereographic diagrams drawn to analyze earthquakes for seismologist Dr. John Hodgson. Even though this art show has a focus on Juan Guerre, uh, other artists are included whose works also bridge the gap between science and art.
piece is called Matrix One from 1972. Goyer and the artist Norman White were great admirers of each other's work. They shared a philosophy of sustainability and scientific critique via the inclusion of obsolete materials and technologies. White, currently based in Durham, Ontario, immigrated to Toronto from Texas via the UK after being told by light artist Michael Hayden that Toronto's streets were lined with transistors. This work creates a light pattern that follows an algorithmic equation and also has its component parts visible to the audience. Euclidean poetry, A, B, and C, space between hyperbolas. For Goyer, the poetry in science was self-evident. In this work, he brings the simple ele elegance of geometry in tandem with his minimalist approach to sculpture, and gives the audience the opportunity to invent themselves in the beauty of the environments he creates. In this work, as in most, visual perception is challenged as we are tasked with following invisible lines in space to connect the hyperbolas with the focal red point. This next artist, Darsha Hewitt, was once Goyer's studio assistant. She's from Germany. When this art piece senses your presence, the TVs turn on and the static comes on and that creates static electricity that rings the bell chimes in front of the sets and it shows the limitation of our ability to detect invisible forces in our daily environments that we build around ourselves. see a little bit of a faint grid and when you walk up the steps you can't see it
This is Juan Goyer's Loom Drum, built between 1986 and 1992. This work depicts, in a 15-minute cycle, the activity of 5,500 earthquakes, measuring 4.0 or more on the Richter scale, and recorded in North America between 1960 and 1989. So, geological scientific data represented in artistic form. Watching this cycle of seismic upheaval represented by light flashes on a large concave drum, the viewer is caught up in the liveliness of Earth's geological system. The work itself, with its confluence of wires and complex circuitry visible behind the transparent drum, points back to the inception of the computer and its derivations from the jacquard loom. The mechanic aesthetic of circuitry and its techno technical requirements is evidence, evidence to the intense physical computing demanded to produce this work. And the flashes reflect from the the flashes reflect onto the map, and the map is visually amplified by the magnifying lenses.